springtime in Central Europe. With the cherry blossom in April, it unfolds in all its glory. Nature reawakens and signals the time of new beginnings. The cherry is one of the first fruit-bearing trees to blossom, sometimes earlier, sometimes later. It depends on the weather. After a long winter, if the weather warms up quickly, many types of fruit trees can start blossoming at once. Between the trees, other creatures enjoy the warmth of spring. Free of their winter coat, sheep graze in the meadows with their lambs. While nearby, starlings hunt insects. These lambs were born a few weeks ago and are now enjoying their first warm spring days in the protection of the herd. Their wool is not only a great favorite with human beings, the tit finds uses for it too. It breeds in a nesting box as natural hollows are rare. Its eggs stay nice and warm on the cozy woolen bed. For bees, this is now their busiest time. The female worker bees tirelessly carry food to the hive. They feed the other workers in the hive and fill up the honeycombs. This well-known waggling dance is how returning bees communicate to the others what kind of food they can find and where it is. The queen, marked by the beekeeper, now lays egg after egg in the prepared honeycomb cells. During the high season, that's up to 2,000 a day. Nurse bees take care of the brood for nine days, feeding the larvae. Then they're covered and pupate. Twelve days later, the fully formed bee frees itself from its wax cell and gets its first sweet energy boost. Honey is the hive's driving force. And there's plenty of raw material for it right now, because in late April, apple tree blossom adds its nectar to the supply. Now, almost all the fruit trees are in full bloom. High season in spring is a very strenuous time for bees. There's an abundance of nectar and pollen, so they have to gather supplies constantly. Around ponds and lakes, deciduous trees now start to bear pale green shoots. On the water, there's not much happening. Breeding keeps the waterfowl fully occupied. To safeguard against predators, these coots have constructed a floating nest. The pair keep the eggs warm and protect them around the clock. They change guard every couple of hours, 24 hours a day. At the edge of the pond, a cormorant warms up before its next dive. He's also reveling in the increasing warmth of the spring sun. 
Beech leaves only unfold towards the end of April. Within a few short weeks, the spring landscape changes dramatically. The leaf canopy is getting denser. Soon, only a few rays of sunshine will reach the forest floor. The leaves in the treetops now take up most of the sunlight. A hedgehog forages on the forest floor. After nearly six months' hibernation, it has to tank up on energy reserves. The dung beetle makes a very convenient appearance. Dung beetles live off mushrooms, excrement, and rotting plant matter. The hedgehog, on the other hand, is a predator. It's mainly carnivorous. It diligently rummages about on the forest floor, finding quite a few dung beetles. A slow worm is hunting in the soft moss. Slugs are a particular favorite. Once the slug is spotted, it's all over. The slow worm's teeth are angled backwards. This gives them a good hold on their slippery prey. Not everyone likes slug slime in their mouth, though. The forest now has plenty of food for a variety of creatures. The jay finds what it needs for survival here, too. It observes the forest floor keenly. Because the squirrel can be a fierce competitor when foraging. Crows also look for things to eat down here. In spring, jays often still benefit from the hidden stores of food they laid down in autumn. If only they could remember where they hid the tidbits. They have the same problem as the squirrel. It can't always find the previous year's stores either. In early May, all the trees are lush and green. The wild sows need plenty of sustenance now. Leaves, roots, tubers, worms, larvae, and whatever else they can find on the ground. By May, their offspring are mostly bigger than this. These piglets are probably latecomers. Springtime exuberance is apparently not an age-related issue. Soon, the little ones need to take a rest and recover their energy. If danger threatens or the sow starts in fright, the little ones react with a rarely observed flight reflex. They freeze, motionlessly feigning death until the mother gives the all clear. All the sows in a group take care of all the group's offspring together. This way, they grow up well protected. High up in a tree, a squirrel takes a well-earned break. 
before carrying on in typically industrious fashion. Both red and black-coated squirrels are pretty well constantly on the go. Spruce seeds need a moist environment to germinate. Countless tiny trees struggle up out of the ground. But only a few survive to replace the older trees later. During May, the tall conifers begin to bear the next generation of cones. When they ripen, they contain the staple diet for squirrels. The agile rodents can turn their rear paws outwards so they can hold themselves securely while upside down in a tree. It takes the seeds of around 100 spruce cones to fulfill a squirrel's daily energy requirement. So they have to eat very quickly. They deftly rip open the covering scale to get at the tiny seeds. As soon as a pine cone is empty, they start looking for the next one. Around ponds and lakes, things are getting busy. Little ducklings, coot chicks, all of them need to have their bellies filled. The only solution is teamwork, as these coot parents know. One is fed on the water, and one in the nest. This strenuous parenting period carries on for four to six weeks. They all return to their nest for some downtime. In the Moorhen family, only one chick has survived. It's also fed by both parents. And it actually seems to be full at last. Bugs aren't called that for nothing. The merry month of May is high season for these insects. Every couple of years they appear in their thousands and strip the trees bare of leaves. The beetles only live for between four and seven weeks. In this short time they function as eating machines. Calmly but inexorably, they munch their way through every leaf in sight. But as with most creatures in spring, their most important task is to reproduce. They have quite peculiar mating rituals that can often end in a crash. Maybugs aren't good at either flying or climbing. And beware the mowing machines. The few of them that do survive are easy prey for birds. It's often starlings who fly in to mop up after the harvest. In May, they busily raise their young. For around 20 days, they have to ensure a more or less constant supply of food. 
so a glut of May bugs helps their offspring grow especially quickly. Even the little nuthatch catches these big creatures. and keeps a supply of them going, one after the other. Thrushes are also plagued by their insatiable youngsters, as are the tits in their nesting box. Spring is really exhausting for adult birds. Towards the end of May, spring also begins to come to an end. Most trees now sport lush greenery. The sun climbs ever higher in the sky, and the animal world has produced offspring. And now, summer is in the air.